I design the extra thumbs. The third thumb project is based around a 3D printed thumb extension for your hand, controlled by your toes. It's a catalyst for discussion, a bridge between design and neuroscience, and a really unique experience. <laughs> The words we use to describe our bodies and the bodies of other individuals is important. When we use words like missing, deficient, fix, false, or replace to describe someone, it means something. It implies there is a human baseline of normal, and there's not. The word prosthesis comes from mid-16th century Greek linguistic origin, prosthethene, pro, towards, tethene, to place meaning to add to. We physically design the world around us, and we fit into it. Everything we touch interacts with our bodies in some way, especially our hands. Our hands are our biological tools. They're our body's physical interface with our environment, as well as the contact point for almost all physical tools we use. Devices, utensils, appliances, mechanisms, and instruments are how we add to ourselves. As a product designer, I love designing for the body, especially the arms and hands. And when I came across the origin of the word prosthesis, it suddenly shifted my understanding and perspective of what these objects are. Prosthetics sit in a really unique crossover point between tool, sculpture, experience, and body part. And not a lot of objects do that. And to design an object like this, I needed to understand what it was like to control something extra attached to my body. Because a prosthetic doesn't fix someone or replace something that is lost, it extends physical ability. So I started brainstorming how I would extend my ability. I went through the usual animal kingdom inspiration, wings, whiskers, tentacles, tails, and then I became a bit more human focused. And what's more human than a thumb? Our thumbs create one of the most uniquely human movements that we do. I'm inspired by the body and looking closer at the structure of the hand, I realized there were no interlocking elements or mechanical hinges, just material being pushed and pulled very deliberately. So whilst prototyping, I focused most on the outcome of the movement by the design of the material, the most successful of which was using 3D printed flexible filament, creating a kind of living hinge. We can't recreate the body in bone, muscle, skin, and tissue yet. But what we can do is be inspired by its ultimate function and utilize the materials we do have and sometimes the outcome is even better. When we focus on extension, not replacement, we open up the possibilities beyond human physicality. An amazing example of this is the cheetah leg, a carbon fiber running blade used by athletes in the Paralympics. So I had my extra thumb. Now I needed to control it. The more complex the design, the harder it is to control. So with the flexible thumb, I decided to limit myself to two degrees of freedom recreating the flexion, extension, and adduction, abduction of our thumbs. So why the toes? The most obvious choice for a control point were sensors on the arm. Yet all the muscles in my arm were already being used, and it was really hard to get two individual deliberate controls from my arm without moving my hand. And so I realized, regardless of where the sensors were, it would have to be a new movement I would need to learn. Myoelectric prosthetic arms contain EMG surface sensors, which utilize muscles in the residual limb. The muscles remember controlling the hand before the amputation, and myoelectric sensors tap into that, linking the muscle movement to coded mechanical control of the prosthetic. Congenital one-handers are different to amputees. They were born with one hand, so they were born their whole self. There's no muscle memory in a congenital limb because it's never needed to control a hand. So if a prosthetic is utilized, it takes a lot of training because the brain needs to be taught to operate the muscles to use this new extension. As with the control of the third thumb, I needed to introduce my body and my brain to this new addition with the least amount of impact on my basic body movement as well as the most seamless translation of body control input to movement output. And after a lot of testing, I decided on the toes. When you drive a car, do you think about pushing your foot down to move or do you think about moving forward and your foot goes down. That's muscle memory. But it also really helps that when it comes to hands and feet, 
we have a lot more coordination than we realize. Tools and products like drums, sewing machines, pianos, and electric guitars already utilize this really strong connection between our upper and lower limbs to extend or add to the task the hands are doing. The hands and feet are also represented in different areas of the brain, which is something I didn't know, but learned after I was invited to join the team of neuroscientists working on brain plasticity at University College London, or UCL. Primarily, the team worked with upper limb amputees, but were inspired to create a human augmentation study associated with the hands when they came across the Third Thumb Project online after it went viral. Neuroplasticity is our brain's ability to adapt. When our bodies change and grow, and we encounter different experiences and skills throughout life, our brain changes too. At UCL, I'm working with Dr. Tamar Makin and Paulina Kaliba, and primarily with our study, we're exploring how the brain representation of our biological fingers, which you can see here in the rainbow, is potentially being altered by third thumb use, as well as whether the toes, the control point for the thumb, are potentially being represented more hand-like in the brain. We are also exploring what resources the brain will utilize to control a body part that's never been associated with it before. We've just started testing with participants with a thumb, and the study is really unique, being the first ever technological augmentation fMRI study, which is really exciting and ultimately contributing to a better understanding of the boundaries of brain plasticity, as well as new models for body representation. By focusing on this extension, we can work not only with the amputee community, but also a larger population of individuals, enabling significant amounts of data about the augmentation of the body to then feed back into areas of neuroplastic and prosthetic research. This project started as a personal design exploration and a way to gain understanding through experience, and I never expected it could evolve into this. What the Third Thumb Project has enabled is a bridge between design and neuroscience and strengthening these interdisciplinary collaborative relationships helps to improve research tools and ultimately to progress the design and functionality of prosthetic limbs. By focusing on extension, not replacement, we're shifting the conversation from loss to potential, from repaired to designed, and from missing to whole. Thank you. <laughs>